Welcome to today's candidate information session. We will be going over a high level introduction to the nomination process and what it means to be a counselor in Norfolk County. Candidates are encouraged to reference the Provincial 2022 Candidate Guidebook and the Municipal Elections Act to better understand the election process. The Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing will be conducting a more comprehensive training session on June 21st at 6.30 p.m. Please visit the County Elections webpage to register for this event. My name is Liz Harrison. I'm the Elections Coordinator for the 2022 Municipal Elections and will be your primary contact for this election season on behalf of the County Clerk, Teresa Olson. We encourage you to reach out if you have any questions or concerns over the next few months. We are also asked ask that you keep on checking the, in on our elections website as we will keep it updated with information as it comes. Nominations are now opened and closed precisely at 2 p.m. on August 19th. All nominations will be certified by 4 p.m. on August 22nd. Polls will open on Saturday, October 8th and close on October 24th at 8 p.m. sharp. It is extremely important that any candidate who has spent money or accepted donations file their financial statements before 2 p.m. on March 31st. We will be discussing financial statements later on in this presentation. Running for Council and How to Become a Nominee In Norfolk County, the public will be electing for the following offices. One mayor, eight ward councillors, one per each ward except for Ward 5, which will be electing two councillors. For our school boards, the public are voting for these trustees. Four trustees for the English public, two trustees for English separate, one trustee for French public, and finally one trustee for, for the French separate school board. To run for mayor and councillor, you must be a Canadian citizen and a resident of Norfolk County. You are ineligible to run for as a candidate if you are a person not eligible to vote in Norfolk County, an employee of Norfolk County, unless a leave of absence is taken before nomination and you, and you resign if you are elected. You cannot run if you are a judge of any court, a member of the Ontario Legislature, Senate, or House of Commons. You can also not run if you're a person who has, who was a candidate in the previous election and did not file their campaign financial statements by the deadline. If you're running as a trustee, the qualifications are similar to running for the elected official. However, you are not eligible to run if you are a person who is not eligible to, to vote in the school board, if you are an employee of the school board who has not taken an unpaid leave of absence, if you are a judge of any court, a member of the Ontario Legislative, Senate, or House of Commons, a person who was a candidate in the previous election and did not file their campaign financial statements by the deadline. Nominations are now open. They close on August 19th at 2 p.m. Nominations will take place at 185 Robinson Street in Simcoe. Candidates are encouraged to make an appointment to file their nomination papers through elections at norfolkcounty.ca. We will accept walk-ins, but please note that we will only accept if the county clerk or I are available at that time. When you come in with your nomination forms, please have the nomination papers your Form 1 filled out and signed. This will be for council and for trustees. If you're interested in running for council, you must have 25 endorsement signatures on this prescribed form. If you're running for school board trustees, these signatures are not required. Nomination filing fee per head of council is $200 and $100 for ward councillors and school board trustees. Please note that any person endorsing your nomination must be eligible to vote in any election if, regular, if the regular election was held on the day that the person endorses your nomination.
Nominations close at 2 p.m. sharp. If you are still in line at 185 Robinson Street at the candidate nomination desk, your nominations will be accepted. However, if you are not in line at 2 p.m., your nomination will not be accepted. The earlier you file, the better. The clerk will contact you directly if there's any issue with your nomination package. If you decide that you, you want to change your candidacy from ward councillor to mayor, you may submit a withdrawal of nomination form in person and resubmit form one, which is your nomination form. You are not required to resubmit your endorsements. We will transfer those to your new application. However, you are required to pay the difference between the councillor and mayor's fees. The two offices or campaigns are separate and contributions and expenses cannot be transferred from one to the other. If you plan to incur expenses or accept contributions, you must open a separate bank account for each of these campaigns. A contributor's total comp contribution cannot exceed $1,200 for both campaigns for counselor or for school board trustee candidates. It's $2,500 for mayoral candidates. You will be required to file financial statements for each campaign. The withdrawal campaign will show all financial activity from the day the nomination papers is filed until the withdrawal date is filed. The remaining current campaign will show all financial activity from the day the nomination paper is filed until the end of your campaign period. What does it mean to be a member of council? Section 224 of the Municipal, Election, Municipal Act defines the role of the council as the follows. As a council member, you represent the public to consider the well-being and interests of the municipality. You will play several roles, including representative, policymaker, and stewardship in the municipality. Members of council set the services that the municipality provides and ensures that policies, practices, and procedures are in place to implement the decisions of council. Council develop policies respect to accountability and transparency, notices, delegation of authority, hiring, the disposition and sale of land, procurement of goods and services, the relationship between council and staff, as well as the protection of our tree canopy and natural vegetation. Interior municipalities and council operate under a legislative accountability and transparency framework. As a member of council, your key requirements for Norfolk County include adopting policies related to accountability and transparency specified in sections 270 of the Municipal Act, establishing a code of conduct for members of council and certain local boards, ensuring access to an integrity commissioner, certain Municipal Conflict of Interests Act, and open meeting requirements. As a member of Norfolk County Council, you are required to attend a minimum of three meetings per month with the occasional additional special meeting. Currently, council meetings are, had the, are held on the first, second, and third Tuesdays of each month. Each of these me meetings commences as early as 1 p.m. In addition, there may be special but special meeting, budget meetings, or joint meetings scheduled on occasion. As a member of council, you must serve on at least two advisory committee board, committees or boards. The county's procedural bylaw and meeting schedule are currently being reviewed. As a council member for Norfolk County, there will be many opportunities to attend internal and external, external work workshops, conferences, and training throughout your, your term of council. Should you be elected, Norfolk County will provide you with the necessary technology to represent your constituents. Norfolk County is mo moving towards a greener business approach when it comes to council meetings. The clerk's office will be providing only electronic versions of agendas during the next term of council. Council members will, will, will be required to use technology that will be provided by the county to fulfill their duties. Council members have a responsibility to review meeting 
agendas and minutes on a regular basis to be prepared for council and committee mini meetings. Council members must be familiar with the county's procedural bylaw. Council members will also have to be aware of and be able to understand multiple pieces of legislation, including but not limited to the Municipal Act, the Planning Act, the Draining Act, the Health Protection and Promotions Act, the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. A robust council orientation session must be scheduled, will be scheduled starting in November, which will include a number of days that council will be expected to attend for training purposes. The schedule is expected to be posted on the county website sometime in the summer. What does it mean to be a school board trustee? School board trustees are members of the school board. Trustees are locally elected representatives for the public and are advocates for public education. The Education Act creates four different kinds of school boards. English language public, English, English language separate, French language public, and French language separate. The role of a school board trustee is to establish policy direction, participate in making decisions that benefit the entire school board while representing any interests of constituents. Constituents are, or sorry, trustees are account, accountable to constituents of constituents, ministries of education, and families. Campaigning. You must be a registered candidate for erecting an election sign. Your election sign can be erected as of Friday, September 24th at 12 p.m. and must be removed seven days after the election. You are not permitted to erect any signs on any premises used as a polling place or on county property. This means the entire property, including parking lot, adjoining fences, adjacent sidewalks and any abutting road allowances are considered part of these polling places. Do not place any signs in public parks or on any property owned by Norfolk County. Voters list will be made available to you on September 1st. Should you wish for a copy of the voters list, please contact elections at norfolkcounty.ca to receive a digital copy on a USB stick. You will be required to sign a receipt acknowledging the list is only to be used for election purposes and any other use would be in violation of the Municipal Elections Act. Should you want a physical copy, it is your responsibility to print it out. Under the use of corporate resources policy, candidates are not allowed to use county property to print the voters list. If you are running as a ward councillor, you will only receive a voter list for your ward. If you are running for mayor, you will have access to the voters list in, in its entirety. On voting day, there will be strictly no campaigning at any polling location. You are prohibited from displaying any campaign materials that and this includes print media, banners, clothes, and signs at any polling location. Your campaign finance, finances, financial rules and regulations. Accurate keeping is a legislative requirement. Candidates and third-party advertisers must keep records of the following. Receipts issued for any contribution, value of every contribution, whether that contribution is in form of money, goods, or services, your contributor's names and addresses, and every expense, including the receipts obtained for each. The campaign period starts the day that you, the candidate, files your nomination papers and until October 24th, 2022. In general, the following penalties are, are available to the courts upon conviction of any offense under the Municipal Elections Act. 
a $25,000 fine, up to six months imprisonment, the, and the inability to run in next general election, or if you're convicted of a corrupt practice, to vote in the next election. If you were elected, you will be forfeiting your office if, it was, if the offense was committed knowingly. For further information, please refer to the Municipal Elections Act. Your campaign finances. A contribution is any includes your money, goods, or services. Campaign bank account must be open for election campaign purposes prior to spending spending or accepting contributions. Candidates can accept contributions from individuals who are normally residents in Ontario, you, the candidate yourself, and your spouse. Who cannot make a contribution? Candidates and third party advertisers cannot accept contributions from a federal political party, a provincial political party, Federal, the federal or provincial government, a municipality, a school board, a business or group that is not a corporation. Contributions over $25 may be made by check or money order or by any method that clearly shows where the funds originated from. If goods sold to raise funds are sold for $25 or less, that amount considered a campaign income and is not a kind of contribution. Donations under $25 at fundraising events are not contributions. Ticket price of fundraising is a contribution. Receipts must be issued for each contribution and should include the name and address of the contributor and the amount and the date of the contribution. No anonymous contributions are accepted. The following are not contributions. If you have a volunteers working your campaign, the value of the volunteer labor is not a contribution. A cash donation of $25 or less received at a fundraising event is not a contribution is considered to be a contribution, and you may accept such donations without keeping track of who gave them to you. The, the value of the free political advertising provided as such advertising is made available to all candidates and is in accordance with the Broadcasting Act of Canada is not considered to be a contribution. If you obtain a campaign loan from a bank or recognized lending institution, the amount of the loan is not a contribution. There is a limit that the municipal candidate can contribute to their own campaign. The contribution limit does not apply to school board trustees. The formula to count the limit is for head of council is $75,000 plus 20, 20 cents per eligible elector. For council members, it's $5,000 plus 20 cents per eligible elector. The candidates who own contrib candidates own contribution can be attained through a loan. Loans can only be borrowed from a bank or an another recognized lending institution in Ontario and must be directed into the campaign account. Loans may only be guaranteed by the candidate or the spouse. All of the contributions that you or your spouse make to your own campaign counts towards this limit, including the contributions of money, the value of goods or services that you or your spouse donate, the value of any inventory from the previous election that you use again in this campaign. A contributor may only contribute a maximum of $1,200 per candidate. The maximum total amount that a contributor can give to candidates in the same jurisdiction, A is running for the same council or in the school board, is $5,000.
It is the candidate's responsibility to inform contributors of this limit. Limits apply whether it is one large contribution or the total number of smaller contributions or, or combination of money, goods, or services. You must issue a receipt for every contribution you received. This re receipt should show who made the contribution and the date and the value. If the contribution was in goods or services, you must determine the value of goods or services and issue a receipt for the full value. If you receive a check from a joint personal account, the receipt must be issued only to the person who signed the check. The contribution can only come from one person. You're required to list the names and addresses for every contributor who gives more than $100 total to your campaign in your financial statement. You must keep a record of all names and addresses for every contributor, regardless of the value, because the same contributor may make multiple contributions totaling more than $100. Please note, Contribution receipts are not tax receipts. Contributions to municipal council and school board campaigns cannot be credited against provincial or federal tax in income tax. You are required to turn any contribution that was made or accepted in contravention with, of the act as soon as you learn that it was ineligible. It must be turned over to the county clerk. If you cannot return the contribution yourself, you must turn it over to the clerk. If you have a surplus at the end of your campaign, you can withdraw your personal contributions and any remaining surplus funds must be turned over to the county clerk. Fundraising functions are events or activities held by you or on behalf of your primary purpose, on behalf for the primary purpose of raising money for your campaign. If you hold an event to promote your campaign you, and you happen to receive con some contributions or ask people to consider contributing to your campaign, this is not a fundraising event. Similarly, if you have a sentence in your campaign brochure asking people to make a contribution or giving them information on how to contribute, this is not a fundraising brochure. Fundraisers can only be held during your campaign period. You must record, record the gross income, including ticket revenue and other revenue, and the expenses related to each event and activity on your campaign financial statement. If you sell tickets to an event, the ticket price is considered to be a contribution to your campaign and must issue a receipt to every person who purchases a ticket. If you raise funds selling goods or services for more than fair market value, the difference between the fair market value and the amount paid is considered a contribution. If the good or service is sold for $25 or less, the amount paid is considered a campaign income and is not a contribution. For the purposes of the Municipal Elections Act, the following are considered campaign expenses. For candidates, the costs incurred for goods or services or by under the direction of the candidate who hold wholly or partly for the use in, in the of their election campaign expenses. For third party advertisers, costs incurred by or under the direction of a third, registered third party advertiser for goods or services for use wholly or partly in relation to a third party advertisement that appears during an election in a municipality are expenses. Goods or services that are contributed to your campaign are also expenses. They should be treated as if the contributor gave you money and you went out and purchased the goods or services. You must record both the contribution and the expense. The clerk's calculation for the spending limit is final. The formula to calculate 
The expenses are as follows. For head of council, the limit is $7,500 plus 85 cents per eligible elector. For council members or trustees, the limit is $5,000 plus 85 cents per eligible elector. The clerk will provide both candidates and third party advertisers who are certificates. The clerk will provide this information to candidate and third party advertisers with two certificates. Your preliminary estimate when filing a nomination form or registering as a third party advertiser based on the 2018 voters list. You will get this when you file your nomination form and it will be in your 2022 candidates guide. The second certificate will be provided after September 1st and it's going to be based on the 2022 voters list. The higher of these two amounts will be your spending limit. <laughs> Most of your expenses will be subject to the spending limit. The following expenses are not subject to the spending limit. Expenses related to a fundraising event, expenses related to a recount, expenses related to a court action, expenses related to a compliance audit, expenses that are incurred by a candidate with a disability that are directly related to the candidate's disability, audit and accounting fees. Please note any materials, events, or activities must have fundraising as a primary pur purpose in order to be exempt from the spending limit. Campaign inventory from your previous selections may be used in this election as long as you establish the current market value of the goods and record that on your financial statements. It is your responsibility as a candidate to file complete and accurate fi financial statements on time. The filing deadline is 2 p.m. on the last Friday in March following the election. So that is March 31st, 2023. If you file the nomination form, you must file financial statement. The clerk is required to make financial statements available to the public in an electronic format free of charge. Your candidate's nomination fee is refundable only if the financial statement is filed on time. A candidate who a candidate or who misses the filing deadline may file within 30 day grace period, provided that you file a $500 late filing fee and that is paid to the municipality. A candidate or third party advertiser may resubmit a financial statement to correct any errors up until the filing deadline. You must have an auditor review your financial statement and provide a report if your campaign expenses exceed $10,000 the contri contribution received, including contributions from yourself, exceed $10,000, or both your expenses and your contributions exceed $10,000. There are three contributions of the Municipal Elections Act where penalties apply automatically. Candidates can review the Min Municipal Elections Act to better understand these penalties. Each municipality and the school board must appoint a compliance audit committee. If an eligible elector believes that you have contravened the election financial rules, they must apply for a compliance audit of your campaign finances. The application must be in writing and must set out the reasons why you believe they contravened the rules. An application for the compliance audit must be submitted to the municipal clerk who conducted the election within 90 days of the deadline to file their campaign financial statements. The Compliance Audit Committee will consider the application and decide whether to grant or reject the application. You may appeal the committee's decision to the Superior Court of Justice within 15 days after this decision is made. If the committee grants the application, it will appoint an auditor to conduct 
conduct a compliance audit for your campaign finances. The auditor is entitled to have access to all your financial records related to your campaign. The auditor will produce a report, which you are entitled to receive. The Compliance Audit Committee will consider the auditor's report. If the report concludes that there is an apparent contravention to the Municipal Elections Act, the committee will decide whether to commence legal action. The Compliance Audit Committee does, have the, does not have the authority to set penalties. Only the court can decide if you contravene the act, and if so, which penalties should apply. Uh, information continues to be available on the county's elections website. The clerk's office encourages candidates to reference the, the Provincial 2022 Candidates Hand Guide book and the Municipal Action, Elections Act. Thank you for your attention.